Welcome back, Nord Angus students, to the third constructing activity where we're going to look at variables. Um, this one's going to be called the values of variables, and we're going to look at uh, exploring how to use variables in JavaScript correctly through declaring their name and assigning values. So let's have a quick look. This is going to be quite a short video, and I'm going to just type, I'm going to declare a variable called var foo, and we're going to store in this variable uh, the contents of this text. It doesn't matter if we use double quotes or single quotes, as long as we are consistent with their use. Okay, don't start it with a single and then finish with a double because it won't work. So I'm going to say a variable called foo. This is what's stored in that variable. I will then have another one called bar, which will be basically exactly the same, but this time called a variable called bar, like so. And we'll just change this to lowercase f there. And I'm going to have another one called... Um, Baz. Okay. Like so. Okay. But I haven't put var at the beginning of this one. So we'll see what happens on this one. Okay. And we'll say window dot alert. Actually, we'll use the console for this one. Console dot log. And we'll say foo. And I'm going to just copy and paste this. And we'll say baz. And we'll say uh, bar as well. So we'll say bar. Make sure it's in the same as the other part. And we'll say baz. And we'll save it and we'll run it. Okay, we've got this open already, which is good. We'll run it. And it just says a variable called foo, variable called bar, and a variable called baz. It reads it out. Ideally, I should be actually saying there at the beginning, so it defines it. It's just, cons it's just good practice there. Okay, but as you can see there, it all that did was it just, I created my variable, I then stored a value in that variable, and then when I ran it, it then ran it. It basically ran it for me. Great. So that wasn't too difficult. Again, I'm going to just, let's just change this again. So let's say var uh, foo, var bar. We're going to say var baz. And we'll say var q u x, okay. And this time I'm going to say foo equals I am foo, okay. Bar will be I am bar. Make sure you end them with a. Uh, a semicolon here. I was like consistently with spacing as well. Okay, then we'll say Baz will store the contents of foo and QUX will store the contents of um, Baz. I just had to make sure there that when I do this, I, I I put semicolons at the end of each line uh, to make that work. Um, nothing will feed back there yet, so I can just do window dot alert uh, baz, and what that will do, and I can say window dot alert um, q u x. And then that will then um, feed back to the user the contents of Baz, which of course uh, is the contents of uh, Foo. 
or or QUX will feed back the contents of bars, which is the contents of foo. Okay, in fact, I will delete this bars one because I don't need it. It's QUX that's going to feed back. It's linked to all the others. So let's run that, and it says I am foo, and that's the contents of QUX, which bars, of course, is the contents of foo, and that was I am foo. Great, fantastic. Um, and now for the final bit, we're going to have a look at uh, numbers in terms of all this. So we've looked at the, the variables and storing values and um, swap it, uh, take, taking values and storing it as a different variable and uh, feeding back the use of that context, that variable that's taken from another variable and another variable. What about numbers? Let's have a look at numbers. So I'm going to create some, so I'm going to delete some of this and I'm going to change the variables here. So I'm going to have num1 uh, and I'm going to store in num1 the, uh, the number 10, but I'm going to store it with single quotes. Okay, so it's stored as a text value. I'm then going to have another variable called num2, and I'm going to do exactly the same, but this one is stored without single quotes. So it's stored as a number. Okay, and then I'm going to take a third variable called num3 and a fourth variable called num4. So um, now, for in order for num1 to be a number i need to convert it i need to convert it to a number so i'm going to store the num1 as a number the contents of num1 i'm going to store as a number so i'm just going to use this number data type okay and i'm going to feed in num1 and what that will do is it'll take the contents of num1, it's going to convert it to a number, and it's going to store it as number three. I'm then going to take num4, and I'm going to add, let's, let's try num1, add num2, see what happens. And then I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to then do num1 equals num3 add num4 and we'll see what happens there okay so I'll say window dot alert and we'll just feed back num4 um, num4 first and then we'll do window dot alert and we'll feed back num1 and we'll see what happens with this Okay, so I'm going to save that and I'm going to refresh it. So the first one, oh, let's turn this to line 14, uh, unexpected identify. Let's have a quick look. Line 14. Oh, I put and there instead of the plus. Okay, so I can save that. So that's where the, the console comes very useful. It can tell us if there's any errors. So this time, when I do this, it prints 10, 10, it prints 1,010. Why has it done that? Because it's taken um, num3 and num4, and num4 is just basically num1 and num2 put together and joined. And because it thinks this is text, it's just going to join them together. So it makes, um, so, num4 basically is just joining these two together the next one of course it should become it will just it should now just become hopefully 1020 because i think this will now think it as a number let's have a look oh no it adds because we haven't converted it still thinks this is a text value so that's where if you want us a number, we need to tell it it's going to be a number. 
So for example, if we want that num1 to be a number, let's just do it like this, number in brackets num1, so we're now converting that num1 to a number and then adding to that num2, which is a number, and we should see it become 20 and then hopefully 30. Let's have a look. Yeah, 20, 30, perfect. And that's what makes a difference. You've got to convert any numbers to a number in order for it to work. Okay. And that brings us to the end of this constructing activity. And thank you very much for watching.